537 on WML. You look fabulous, as you no, always do. Let's Travis. lift that mic up. Ann Coulter oh, okay, asking sorry. how she looks. You They're look Facebooking great. Live. Hold on. Let's just move that right there. And then there you go. Ooh, you All must right. work at a radio station. Oh, I'm told, allegedly. Ann Coulter here. By the way, we're live at CPAC tomorrow, starting with Mornings on the Mall with Brian and Mary, then Chris Plant, and then, of course, Rush, but he won't be at CPAC. I'll be here for CPAC as well, Thursday and Friday. You're in town, Ann Coulter, but you're not going to CPAC. Correct. You're hanging out with Milo Yiannopoulos instead. You're going to go drink, <laughs> do, do tequila shots or something. I would. Yeah, if he were here. I know. I would. I, you know, I wonder if he'll show up tomorrow, do you think? That he'll sort of do one of his stunts or something? No. You know Milo pretty well. Yes, I had dinner with him a week. I was the first person in the U.S. he had dinner with. Yeah. And by the way, I've been telling him since I first met him, you got to ease up on the sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I really think, I mean, that is what got him in trouble. Um, speaking of fake news and Donald Trump, um, which he is totally right about. I mean, it's totally fake news what, what they are saying about Milo. He didn't d- defend pederasty. He kept saying in that interview, he's distinguishing what real pederasty is from um, a 17-year-old right. and a 29-year-old. But people don't want to hear about it. And you know on topics like that, if you aren't completely 1,000% uh, clear and unequivocal, and if there's any room, they that's what that's what happens. Well, you know what it reminds me of, um, which is weird because Bill Maher attacked him today. But it reminds me of the Bill Maher thing that got him dumped from ABC. I just talked about this earlier in really? the three o'clock hour. It's the I exact read what Bill Maher thing. said. His words were yes. fine. It was, and in fact, I don't even think it was the flippancy that one night. It was just the sense that he represented the Hollywood. You know, I don't know, the sleazy Hollywood crowd and the flippant remark. He was repeating what Dinesh had said and agreeing. And by the way, he's always been, um, Marr isn't a down-the-line leftist. I mean, he has sort of heterodox views on lots of things. And one of them is he loves the military. He said in 1996 he was voting for Bob Dole because it was the last chance he would have to vote for an American hero. Mm. I mean, he's always been like that. But so he, he got canned from ABC News because, because he had made attitude. that comment about the 9-11 But it was all and- attitude and... And I think it was the same thing with so, Milo. And also, it, nobody wants to hear about sex. But he was absolutely not defending pederasty. And today, <laughs> Bill Maher said to the New York Times, what I think people saw after Milo appeared. He's taking credit for this, Bill Maher is. Which is weird. I know. Uh, Milo appeared on his show on Friday. He says, when I, what I think people saw was an emotionally needy Ann Coulter wannabe. You see this? Trying to Everybody's make a buck. Everybody's an Ann Coulter <laughs> wannabe. I know. That I'm, doesn't really distinguish I I him. I think he's more than that. He says, <laughs> as I say, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And then he said, you're welcome. And this is hard for you. You're actually friends with both Bill and Milo. Right. So why, why is he dragging you into this? Well, he was getting attacked on the left. And I had nothing to do with that. I thought Milo's appearance was fantastic. At least what I saw. I don't subscribe to HBO. So I saw it was posted online. And I thought he was great. Um, as as um, just, you know, a little rule of thumb, right-wingers, when all of the panelists' only response to you is go F yourself, you've won. <laughs> <laughs> when you leave them spluttering and, you know, you're cursing like Linda Blair in The Exorcist, you have won, and that's what he did. Um, and he was charming and nice. So, no, I, it was nothing with that appearance. Um, I, I mean, the, the problem with CPAC is the problem that, as I wrote about my column that has just been posted, um, not specifically about CPAC, is about congressional Republicans. I hate every single one of them except Tom Cotton and six others. Um, <laughs> I think it's exactly six others. I should probably list them all at some point, but that's it. And the rest of them, Trump has taken on this entire town. And for years, I've advised young young conservatives, don't go to Washington, don't go to Washington. Go make money. Go do what you're good at. What Trump did. And look at how he beat them all. Over, you know, for Pete's sake, look at him. He, that Access Hollywood tape. What do we have to do to convince you that we hate you, Washington? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and the same thing that, that all of these Washington insiders and the dorky little think tanks and these, you know, the losers with their... With their <laughs> I don't even want to mention all the things. You tanks. can, it's all With right. their, uh, you know, then oh, and they work their way up the political ladder so they can run for the House and run for the Senate. And then they're just all scaredy cats. Hey, they become part of the, and they the have mob mentality of no town. independent thinking. I mean, anyone who's ever heard John McCain talk knows they're not bright people. So, of <laughs> course, 
Donald Trump has like six times their IQ. And even with all of his baggage, he slays all of them. He was never not ahead in the polls, comes in and wins, and they still can't learn. And the exact same dorks that destroyed the Republican Party have now destroyed CPAC because, you know, Matt Schlapp is just dying. Someone will run after him and ask for his photo someday. So there are no stars at CPAC. Um, I mean, I saw them. I was noticing this last night because, oh, they're so excited. They're all getting invited on TV so they can say who is a conservative and who isn't because Milo's not a conservative. And today all the media is full of them all giving long quotes saying, we condemn racism. What the F? <laughs> I'm sorry. How how long do we have to keep going? There? And what was this thing well, that Donald Trump was going through this week right. with condemning anti-Semitism? Wait, can, can I get Wolf Blitzer and Don Lemon and, um, you know, Jake Tapper? Will they um, once and for, for all condemn child rape? Because I've never heard them do that. They really haven't. And it's nearly not as much as they should, it, it no. appears. And Sean Spicer actually made this point yesterday. He says, at what point is this an asked and answered kind of question? No, at it was point? asked and answered three uh, years yeah, ago. Yeah. And why is it even being asked? This is a crazy thing where you keep peppering someone with some ugly accusation and demand. I mean, he had to <laughs> disavow. And I still maintain that David Duke does not exist. I think he died like 20 years ago. I only hear about him every four years when the media wheel, wheel out the concept of David Duke to demand that every Republican disavow him. His face does it? look kind of phony. It could, it could be somebody <laughs> who had reconstructive surgery. Hillary is appearing on stage with, with members of Black Lives Matter at her convention. They actually, you know, throw riots, do millions of dollars of property damage. But nobody asks her about, uh, about that. After those cops were killed in Dallas, she said... Um, um, her response was something about how well we all need to to learn um, what Tolerance. it's like oh. to be not the not the cops needed to learn. Oh right, what it's like to be um, you know a black person in America. Oh, that's your response to cops being executed. Yeah, but they'll never be asked. Do you hate cops? Will you disavow cop killers? That's Ann Coulter. She's with us through this half hour. Uh, she's, of course, the author of In Trump We Trust, He Pluribus Awesome, and Adios America. Uh, and those two books in mind, our questions coming up in a moment, have to do with who in the Trump White House is actually working against the president, because I bet you have a hunch. And, and, and truly, there are people in this White House working against him, I think. And also, your take on the Trump administration's new rules with regard to immigration and apparently keeping DACA in place. Are you ready for Not answering that? Not very those? happy about yeah. that part. We will hear Ann Coulter's reaction <laughs> to that in a moment. Right now it's 544. Traffic and weather, the day's top stories, and you. This is the Larry O'Connor Show. Oh, my. It's 549 Ann Coulter. Uh, <laughs> There's some things that we need. We're Facebook living this, by the way, if you want to watch. Uh, oh, I Anne. hope you got that because I can't say that on radio. No, we kept that <laughs> off. We're going we're gonna to cut that out. Uh, and, uh, well, you know I'm right. Laughter is the truth catching you by surprise. And your laugh proves you know I'm right. The president just announced his immigration <laughs> policies. In your heart, you know I'm right. There's a whole That's lot of good stuff. about Goldwater. There's a whole lot of good stuff there. Yes, but, there is. But the DACA thing. One Let's tiny start with little that. flaw. The dreamers. Oh, well, you're starting with the tiny they're little keeping flaw. the dreamers. Yeah. Um, I think, I'm, I got to say, I really, I blame the Republicans in Congress more for this. Trump can't do everything himself. It's the world against Trump. Um, and uh, what are they doing? They're calling up the Washington Post and, you know, denouncing him, opposing his policies, anything they can to undermine him. Why don't they get rid of DACA? Why don't they set, um, say, no more refugees for a while? America has been taking in more refugees than the entire rest of the world combined um, for many decades now. How about you take some, Mexico? Yeah. Well, they did. Didn't they pass something when they knew Obama would veto it? I thought that they passed something. Oh, that, they passed lots of great stuff yeah. when it was going nowhere. They defunded DACA, I thought, uh, uh, like like two and a half, three years and ago. And they, they also knew. repealed Obamacare. Where are right, those? Right. And Where, what anything. are they doing? Seriously, what does Paul Ryan's day look like? I had Dave Bratt on earlier today, and I had Jim Jordan on last week, and I asked them the exact same question, uh -huh. which is, uh, are you waiting for the administration to repeal Obamacare? Oh, because you. you can do it right now. Both of them said it's the uh, Republicans in the Senate and our leadership that's stopping it. That's we need new leadership. Said. Who do you want to be Speaker of the House? You know, I'm not sure, but I know not Paul Ryan. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> if we could just start with that. So, um, so you know, think the Republicans on the you think the Republicans on the Hill are are Utterly not useless. not only not doing anything to help Trump, resistance. but they're hurting Trump. What about That's inside what my the White House? About which is fantastic, and you should all read it. It's called American Gigolos. And? Do you know that like ten percent? I mean, this is just a casual Google search. Ten percent of the <laughs> of the U.S. Congress is men sponging off their wives' inheritances. It's got to be higher than in any other profession. Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, of course, John McCain. We all know about John Kerry, Richard Blumenthal, uh, Michael McCall. Um, all these, what other profession well, has well. this many men sponging off their wives' well, inheritances? Now, do you make the same claim about Dianne Feinstein, who is sponging off of her rich husband? See, you're being sexist now. Um, There's something wrong with a man doing it, but not no, a woman? No, no. Um, it's a <laughs> Although I'm really looking forward to doing that myself, so I don't want to be too critical. Um, no, you do expect a man to. No, I think it's a lovely thing. I, it's like when gir- girls used to be teachers, and that's when we had good teachers, by the way, when they were supported by wealthy husbands and didn't have to go and you know work at a law firm all night. Um, but no, I, I, I might blame them too, but at least it wasn't an inheritance. And I also don't, I mean, I noticed that the self-made men are also disproportionately Republicans. Yeah. But this entire profession, that tells you the kind of people we're doing with. They really, they personally hate Donald Trump because he not only made his own money, he wasn't at one of these dork think tanks where 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 bright, energetic college kids go to die and end up just being losers. They end up Paul Ryan 40 years later. Later. No, go out in the world, make your way, um, and then and then run for office and crush everyone like Donald Trump like Donald did. Trump you could did. even be caught on hot mic tape saying absolutely <laughs> outrageous things. And America will so hate Washington, they'll say, screw it, we're putting you in the White House. Do you think we're going to see a replication in, in districts around the country of, of what they're calling the Trump effect, that Trumpism is going to start bringing in a whole new breed of congressmen? I hope so. Women? I hope so. I hope so. I, I think so. Um, the one thing I'm worried about, and I think it's wor- worth saying because they're trying to, you know, to use the, the chic word these days, normalize, normalizing. Mm. No, the bad thing that has gotten normalized um, is the idea that you come to Washington as a profession. Uh, what Trump has done is is weird, only if you weren't around for the writing of the Constitution. When you were supposed to <laughs> go off, be a silversmith, be a farmer, come and lend your services temporarily to the United States government. Not anymore. Now we have these losers here for life. No wonder Trump smells like a rose compared to these guys. Do you think he's going to run for a second term? Oh, yeah. And I, and I think he's going to win huge. You don't think he's going to like uh, get a bunch of stuff accomplished his first term and say, you know what? I'm going to set, I'm gonna set to a do. precedent here. Yeah. Too much to do. Plus, he needs to help. He needs to help change the Congress and get more, more Trumps because right now it's Tom Cotton. I still I like Tom Cotton too. I, by the no, way, no, he is. It's weird. Fantastic. He's going out of his way to try to make himself my favorite senator. Uh, I've got one more. I still need to ask you about this White House because I think that there are people working against this president. I'm dying. I'm all ears. No, no, no. You need to tell me. <laughs> uh, Ann Coulter stays with us. Thank God. Thank God. Don't ever go anywhere, Ann Coulter. <laughs> Live and local. You're listening to the Larry O'Connor Show. Finishing up here with Ann Coulter, and it's so delightful to have you in town. You're going to be on Tucker Carlson, my new favorite show on Fox News tonight. Yes, and I will not be screaming that Trump is literally a fascist. That was great last last night. night. Oh, she was wonderful. (laughs) I don't know why they keep coming on Tucker's show. (laughs) Well, somebody, I don't know if you saw, I think I retweeted this. Somebody did, um, I think it was Newsbusters. They have her saying the exact same thing about Bush. Oh, in the same She's way. Just the way. She's just eight years. This is what they We've got. got to get rid of Bush Cheney. They're fascists. Where are these leaks coming from in the White House? Because they're I hurting. No idea. They're not I'm good. all ears. Well, I don't. I think uh, it's the permanent bureaucracy. I mean that 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 people don't understand that. I mean in Washington they understand. So I'm telling I'm telling your audience nothing, but the people who run the government are are the career. Um, bureaucrats, which is a great thing about having a cheap Scott as our president. He's going to see a <laughs> lot of wasted jobs. I think we can get rid of so many permanent jobs. When do you expect that to happen, by the way? I mean, I, I, when I open up the lines and say, what do you want from the Trump presidency? Probably 25% of the calls, 30% of the calls after immigration right. are about when are people going to get fired? That's when fantastic. Are we gonna, when are people going to get fired? Oh, so, and these are that. people who work in the federal government, but they know where the redundancy is. These are people who work well, in the it's Pentagon. it's hard. I mean, it, it takes a long time. The, 
this isn't like just replacing one establishment government with another establishment government. This is something all new. So, you know, we don't, we don't even have the cabinet nominees all confirmed yet. And they're going to oversee their departments. It, that will take some time. But hopefully it will be done and it will be done permanently. Don't be a stranger. We if love talking we to you. If only we could get rid of the Republican senators. <laughs>